All right. Um, over the years, you know, um, my brother has, ha has had like some real, some real interesting characters that work for him and shit. You know, um, I mean, we had Big Larry, we had Fruity, we had Bop. One of the most outstanding uh, characters. I ain't gonna say his real name. I just say his name was. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's say his name was Jupiter. I don't know. Let's say his name was Daryl. All right. You know, uh, <clears throat> he he was a short cat, you know, and he knew my brother from way, way back. They grew up together and uh they were real tight. And uh he used to work for my brother when it when they was up at Saturday Saturday Night Live. And he Dick Ebersaw used to was he really liked this guy because he was real smart and he had uh he he had a, a, a scholarship to Colgate University as well as Stanford, and he could have went to either school, but he decided he didn't want to go, and he, because he was kind of like the black John Belushi, but he wasn't famous. I mean, he was off the hook, you know what I'm saying, with the drinking and the getting high and everything. And uh, what ended up happening with this guy is uh, <clears throat> he he became you know. Drinking can make you obnoxious, you know what I'm saying? So one night we was uh, in L.A. We went to this club, not, not a club, but a restaurant called La Familia. <clears throat> Dean Martin used to eat in there. I actually seen the real Dean Martin. He's sitting at his table, he's eating his spaghetti or whatever, you know. And we're over here and chilling, we're eating out, whatever, waiting for our stuff. And then, um, <clears throat> then Daryl walks in. <laughs> Then Daryl walks in and um, he's real drunk. And he, when he came in, you know, he looked at the whole table and, and he's, he was, you know how he get like this, like a Scarface, so start good night to the bad guy. He was just like that, man. He came in and we was all at the table and he went down the line and there was a Artel Neville. Remember Artel Neville from E? She was there and she was talking to my brother. And he goes down the line insulting everybody at the table. You know, he tells, like it was me, my cousin Ray, Big Fruity, Larry, this guy named Dougie, my brother, and I'll tell Neville. And he goes to each guy and says what, how he would whip that person's ass and knock them out and I'll slap you, Charlie, I'll knock you out, and, and Ray, I'll whip the shit out of you, and Larry, I'll, I'll hit you with a gut punch. And blah, blah, blah. Johnny, I'll knock you the fuck out, bitch. And you, Ray, you may be big. I'll beat the shit out of you, faggot. Fuck all of you. Big Larry, hit you with a fucking gut punch in your fucking big stomach. Greedy motherfucker. I mean, he was, he was, he, he was being real offensive, man, you know? And when somebody tell me they're gonna knock me out, man, you know, I'm, it's real hard not to respond at this, you know, on the spot. I'm gonna tell you, I'm glad my brother Vernon wasn't there, because I'm telling you, he would've he tore his clothes off, right there, he stripped him, dragged him out, you know what I'm saying? But we all had restraint. He went down the line. He said something to Artel that was, uh, I'm not even going to repeat what he said to her. You know, it was off the hook. He, 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 he went over the line with her. He said something to my brother. In fact, I know what he said. He called it, because, you know, even though he's, I mean, uh, Daryl. Because <laughs> Daryl, even though he's black, he insults like a white man. And one of his favorite insults, I mean, he could say this like nobody else. He's, he, you fucking moron. Fuck you. Right? He called my brother a moron, yo. I've never been called a moron by anyone in my life but him. You know what I'm saying? The way he would say it, it would really make you angry. You know, especially, you know, it, it just, it, it, he had a way of doing it, man. That's all I can say. And he would call anybody that. He'd call my brother that. He'd call me that. He called his brother. That was his, 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 his uh, bread and butter, his one-two punch, moron, all right? I remember one night, we was in, in his club, right, L.A., 
we come out the club, and this guy has set up a barbecue pit right in front of the door. We walk out the, out, out the, out the club. You, the, the barbecue smell hits you. You just come out the club dancing and all that. You, 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 you with it, because you ain't thinking about barbecue at 3 in the morning, but that shit was smelling good, right? We get in line. As we get to the front of the line, I look on the grill. There's two guys in front of us, and there's three sausages on the grill. The guy behind us was a gangbanger. He had colors on and the whole shit. He was like four other cats. He looks on the grill, and he counts how many sausages is on there. So he knew that once we get up there, it's going to be no more. So he starts going through all the whole gangbanger. You cool? Fuck that shit, cook. Look here, nook. Let's get my squab on, cuz. I'm hungry, nook. It's going to get that sausage, cuz. And I was like, yo, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not trying to get shot with no AK-47 over with Frank. You know what I mean? <laughs> turns around and goes, fuck you, you fucking moron. And I seen the, the wheels turning in this cat's head. He said, moron? What's a moron, cuz? Luckily, none of them knew what a moron was, man. Or we would, I wouldn't be telling you the story. On that, I was like, look, we got credit cards, we got money, and that, I'm not getting, let's go. I had to drag him off the line. He was gonna challenge some, yo, he was gonna challenge some gangbangers, man, over Frank, man. It ain't worth it. He was off the hook with his shit, man, with his insults, you know? And the way he would say moron, yeah, yeah, fucking moron. Fuck you, pal. It was like pouring acid on you, man. He had, he had, he had a talent with that, man. So we all get up, we go to the car, and he comes out. He want, and we're like, "Yo, hey, we're we're going we're going to the, the Beverly Center to get him to think that you know that's where we're going." So we get in the car, we go straight back to the house. Get to the house, and on the all the way there, everybody's like talking about what just finished happening. Like, "Yo, man, this guy really." He's lucky that he knew us as long as he knew us because, man, you know, anybody else would have did what he just did, man. You know, they would have got. I'm telling you, they would have got done. We go in the house, and uh, everybody's going in different directions. So I'm, I'm in the kitchen, and it was this guy named Rough House. He, all these characters have been ahead of these funny names and shit that worked for my brother. It was this guy named Rough House. He looked like a bulldog. He was a big, fat motherfucker. Now he works for <laughs> He's still doing security. He needs to stop. He's almost 60. He can't fight, all right? And I want everybody that didn't know that and has fake security, all right? Okay, his security is he's the guy, is, he, he's one, he has one foot in the wheelchair, trust me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Rough House is sitting there, you know, and Rough House used to like to fuck with me too. He used to, we used to have this, this like uh, playing the dozens or whatever you want to call it. He tried to say something funny about me and I tried to say something funny about him. And, uh, we walk in the room and Rough House is now teasing me because Daryl uh, told me he was gonna knock me out. Yeah, Charlie, he that little motherfucker tell you he's gonna knock you the fuck out, Charlie. He, he, he. Right? And I'm like, yo, whatever, man. But I tell you what, if 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 I ain't know him, I'm telling you, man. On the, on the serious side, I was getting ready. That really was hard for me not to get up and, and drill him right there, man. But as I'm saying this, you know, I feel two hands grip on the side of my face like this. And then I hear you fucking moron, and it was him, man. He had he had my head like this, and he tried to slam it onto the. the it was like a a, a a nook that I was standing next to. It was marble. He tried to slam my head on there. So when I heard his voice, my head was going. I, I, you know, I was able to power out of it because he didn't have good leverage. He was pulling from. You know, he was short. But I got real mad, man. That, you know, it, you already called me, disrespect me in public. Now you. I don't know how you got in the house. You're in the house and you're grabbing my head and you're trying to slam it on. So I, I started beating on him at that point. So he was like in front of me, I was going to the body. Boom, 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 warming up his ribs. And he, he didn't want to hit, he didn't want no more. So he grabbed my hands and was trying to hold my hands. And I was struggling to try to, you know, to get loose. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know about circular motion back then. You know, I was trying to get loose. And uh, my hand, he started losing his grip and he grabbed my sweater. 
and he held on to my sweater while I was trying to punch, and he stretched the sleeve. It, to, when he let go, the sleeve was touching the ground. I was standing up in the sleeve of my sweater. This is a $500 sweater, man. You know, this is back in like in 90 something. But you know, $500 sweater to me, hey, man, you just fucked up some nice shit. That I, you know, I, mean, I don't got a lot of $500 sweaters. She was down to the ground. And I look at the, the sweater on the ground and I hear Ref House go, he shit, you look at your arms, you like a clown. And it just infuriated me, man. So I. I pulled up my shit, bunched it up, my head. as soon as my fist popped out, and as I popped my fist out, I mean, uh, Daryl. <laughs> Daryl added more fuel by looking me dead in the eye and saying, fuck you, pal. Man, boy, whew, I had dynamite. I put it on his chin, what? And he slid across the floor like this and skidded to a hall, he was knocked out cold, man. His jaw was cracked, he was knocked out cold. So all my rage was in that punch. You know, he was laying on the ground, he was sprawled out. And then Randy gets up and starts, you know, trying to wake him up. And, and I'm, I'm like, you know, I don't want to really, you know, I'm thinking about stomping him, but I'm like, you know what, I know, I know his mother, man. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't stomp, because he was, he, was, he was there to be stomped, I mean, with no resistance. But I said, you know, I know his mother. I, I, so I went upstairs, and I was in the room, and I was like, wow, I can't believe how, what just happened, you know? Because that was like beating up, almost like beating up your cousin or somebody that you knew for a long time, you know what I'm saying? So that was kind of fucking with me, right? And then, you know, uh, I was in a room that had a patio, and had a big door, and the door was open. And, and I'm standing there, I'm like, damn, I can't believe I just did, man. Wow, man, I lost it. And I hear something outside the window go, it's not fucking over. I want more. Come out, you fucking pussy. I want more. And I realized that this, this nigga's outside, man. He's, he wants more, right? And then my brother came in the room, and I looked at my brother, and we stood there for about maybe three minutes, but he kept hearing like a, like a cat whining outside the window. You punch like a bitch. I want more. I want more. I want more. Finally, yo, I was like, you know, all that shit about knowing your moms and all that, that shit was out the window, man. My brother looked at me. He's like, yo, go finish him off. I was like, no problem. I went downstairs, boy. I went to work on this midget. The nigga's not that. He got he had a Napoleon complex, man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. I don't got no problem with beating up any motherfucker. I don't care how, because you might be saying, oh, he beat up a little nigga. I beat up big niggas too, all right? You know what I'm saying? So don't get it twisted. This, you know, big niggas don't usually just want to just do the stupid shit, though. You know what I'm saying? It's always a clown. This nigga, this nigga's about this this high. He had a Napoleon complex, and and me and him used to roll. We would go to a bar, and he would find the biggest nigga in the club and and, and steal on him. And then me and him got to do the nigga up. You know what I'm saying? That's why I stopped going out with him because he 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 had a Napoleon complex. But anyway, so I go downstairs. I put a wreck on him. I mean, it was. It was it was bad, man. So he's after I put this wreck on him, he's he's out, he's laid out. I'm like, I, I'm going back upstairs. You know what I'm saying? They they wake him up and they take and the cats just taking him to take him off the property. I think at the time I was about a buck seventy, whatever. These cats was like 250, 270. They was big. And my man, you know, he was they took him to the car, they was like, get in the car, man. And he just looked at all three of them, he said, Fuck you, pal! Wop! 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 And did a combo, triple, fired on three giants. Yo, you ever used to read Beetle Bailey? Like when the Sarge used to fuck him up and he would be like, look like dirty laundry, like just balled up, like a bag of laundry. That's when, he, when they finished beating him, he'd be like a bag of dirty laundry, man. Like just, you would just think he's ready to go be washed. And they picked him up, they threw him in the car, he was all busted up, and they drove down the hill. Now, this motherfucker had took, because when I had him, I, I'm telling you, I, I took the boy to the brick oven. I made pizza with his face. His face was, I demolished it. And then when they got on him, they put the crust on him. They fucked him up, man. He was fucked up bad. They take him now to the gate. 
threw him in the bushes, right? He told him to get the fuck out of here. You think, okay, it's all over with. They get back up to the house. <laughs> we sitting in the kitchen and then we start hearing, boom, 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 boom. And it had a, a monitor, right? So we look at the monitor, his face was it like, it like somebody had a Halloween mask on, pushing it on the, on the camera. And it was him, and he was going, come out, come out that much more. Boom, 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 boom. You're a bunch of pussies in there, you can't punch. What's the matter? You're afraid to come out? Come out and play! Boom, boom. <laughs> Yo, man, this went on for like <laughs> 45 minutes, man. And then, to take you to the Twilight Zone, a limo pulls up. Now, the night before that, uh, uh, I ran Barkley. I ran the Blade Barkley. He used to be the middleweight champion. He lost his title to James Lights Out Tony. And he took a hell of a, he took a tremendous beating. Tremendous. You know what I'm saying? And uh, his face was, whew, I mean, his face was bad, man. You know, he looked like he required surgery. You know, and uh, the weird shit about it was, you would think that somebody whose face was like that and get it whipped like that, would go to the hospital and stay for at least a month or whatever. But he can't, he went to a comedian's house. Maybe he was he had lost some lost his mind or whatever. He was crazy. Cause you supposed to go to the hospital, you go to Eddie Murphy's house. He came straight from his ass whipping, flew from Vegas to Eddie's house. We didn't even know him that good. We didn't know it wasn't like he was in our family, dog. You know what I'm saying? We knew him like see the club, yo, with a blade, what's up, man? And then you get whipped out and you come, you come straight to us. So we was we didn't know what to say to the brother, you know what I'm saying? But he came over, his face was fucked up. All we could say is, damn, you know, you want to drink? You know, because I know in the cowboy movies, you know what I'm saying, they, they give you something to drink, and pull a tooth or whatever. His face, maybe he'd ease the pain, give him some whiskey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so we offered him a drink, but I'll never forget what he said. Man, my man came, he was like, Yo, the bad as my face is, man, whoever that cat at the gate is, his face made my face feel better. I feel better, man. He wanted to go to the club after that. He didn't think his face was that bad. He drove in, he seen Daryl. He was like, damn, what the fuck happened to him? Daryl was like this. Fucking bitches. Then you can fight, you fucking moron! Boom, 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 boom. Till Five O came and got him, man. We had Five O had to handle that. They had to, you know, because it was either call call the cops or kill him. You know, we didn't want to go there. We know his mama. You know what I'm saying? So they Five O handled. They took him out of there, man. All right, let's go. All right, let's go.